Tuomo Mannerma, a Finnish Luther scholar, published a monograph in 1979 titled Christ Present in Faith, Luther's View of Justification, which gave rise to what is now known as the Finnish School in Luther's Studies. This interpretation, which replaces the traditional forensic reading of justification in Luther's theology with a focus on participation in theosis, has been influential within the Finnish Lutheran Church and the wider academic community. Mannerma emphasizes that the traditional view of God merely declaring sinners righteous neglects the importance of the believer's union with Christ through justification, which entails participation in divine life and deification. He accentuates the inseparability of the inhabitatio dei from forensic justification. In his view, justification is not simply God declaring sinners righteous while they remain in reality sinners, but rather, it confers righteousness based on the ontological reality of Christ's actual presence in the believer. Consequently, for Mannerma, justification by faith equates to participation and deification, as the indwelling righteous Christ enables believers to partake in divine life and become ontologically divine. His position impacts major Lutheran doctrines and has profound academic and confessional implications. Altering justification would significantly change the understanding of Luther's theology. He criticizes the formula of Concord, a key Lutheran confessional statement from 1580, claiming it contradicts the doctrine of justification presented in Luther's texts. Despite widespread controversy concerning the Finnish school within Luther studies, including accusations of disregard for modern Luther historiography, faulty metaphysical analysis, improper prioritization of gift over grace, and compromise of Lutheran doctrines for ecumenical purposes. Its approach has gained acceptance and popularity in many quarters. This essay provides a critical analysis of Mannerma's interpretation, particularly in relation to Luther's Lectures on Galatians 1535, to understand its implications for the theology put forth by the Finnish school. Also, this long piece by Garcia studies the interpretations and arguments of Tuomo Mannerma on Martin Luther's doctrine of justification found in his lectures on Galatians. Mannerma affirms that Luther's doctrine of justification is grounded in Christology and sees the process as ontological, whereby a sinner becomes one with God through a mutual exchange of attributes with Christ. He asserts the importance of Christ's incarnation in human form for atonement and interprets Luther's belief to imply that sinners become right with God through participation in Christ. However, Garcia critiques Mannerma's thesis for deviating from Luther's original introduction, which highlighted the contrast between law and the gospel and not the incarnation. Moreover, Mannerma's interpretation minimizes the significance of the cross in atonement. Garcia indicates that Luther had prioritized Christ's death over the incarnation for overcoming sin, and faith in the gospel for ultimate comfort and salvation. Mannerma is critiqued for neglecting important parts of Luther's work, and his heavy reliance on limited sections of the lectures on Galatians for building his argument. Garcia contends that Mannerma's interpretation fundamentally misunderstands Luther's teachings, downplaying the importance of the cross and law-gospel dichotomy. Several scholars find parallels between Mannerma's and Andreas Osiander's interpretations of Luther, noting that Osiander was rejected by 16th century Lutheran scholars due to his unorthodox views on justification. Furthermore, Garcia finds problems with Mannerma's imposition of Christology on human existence, as it results in devaluing the uniqueness of Christ's person, an assertion that was rejected by the formula of Concord. He debates that Mannerma's interpretation overlooks the importance of the dynamic, reality-shaping Word of God in Luther's teachings. Last but not least, Garcia critiques Mannerma's interpretation of Martin Luther's Christology, disputing that Mannerma misrepresents Luther's doctrine of justification by maintaining an isolated passage within Luther's commentary. Garcia maintains that Luther's perspectives were primarily focused on Christ's atonement on the cross, which he sees as liberating sinners from the constraints of religious law. This aligns with Luther's central theme of passive and active righteousness, 
distinguishing between the law and the gospel. In addition, Mannermah's reinterpretation of justification raises broader theological questions. These issues include the relationship between justification and salvation history, the necessary supremacy of favor, God's kind regard over donum, God's gifts, the influence of the religious figure Andreas Osiander, and the theology of human nature. Garcia seems to suggest that Mannerma overlooks these critical elements in Luther's doctrine, with his narrow focus on one section of Luther's extensive commentary. This oversight leads to an incomplete understanding of Luther's theology, which Garcia aims to correct and elucidate with respect to the theological complexities at play. In conclusion, Tuomo Mannerma, a Finnish Luther scholar, is credited with the creation of the Finnish school in Luther studies, which represents a shift in the traditional forensic reading of justification in Luther's theology to focus on participation and theosis. Mannermah's interpretation points out the believer's union with Christ and conveys justification as the ontological presence of Christ within the believer. The Finnish school interpretation has stirred controversy amongst Luther scholars, with criticisms ranging from its dismissal of modern Luther historiography to compromising Lutheran doctrines for ecumenical reasons. Furthermore, there is a wider study of Mannermah's interpretations by the author, Garcia, mainly focusing on Luther's doctrine of justification grounded in Mannermah's lectures on Galatians. Mannermah's interpretation centers on sinners becoming righteous through participation in Christ, an idea that Garcia critiques as deviating from Luther's original message that contrasted the law and gospel. Garcia also criticizes Mannermah's minimization of the significance of the cross in atonement and is overlooking important parts of Luther's broader work. The critiques continue with comparisons between Mannermas and Andreas Osiander's interpretations of Luther, noting Mannermas' unorthodox views on justification. Garcia further criticizes Mannermas' focus on Christology over the uniqueness of Christ's person, a stance rejected by the formula of Concord. Finally, Garcia reiterates that Mannermas' narrow focus on isolated passages within Luther's commentary results in an incomplete understanding of Luther's theology including overlooking critical elements like the relationship between justification and salvation history.